It's been just over a week since I switched from Android to iPhone and got my brand new iPhone 14 Pro, the first iPhone that I've had in over 13 years. So in this video, I thought I'd give you guys a little update on how that transition has been going with a special emphasis on the camera. In case you guys are new here, my name is Susie and I make videos about compact camera setups for doing travel vlogs and videos. And so my camera of choice for vlogging has been the GoPro, specifically the GoPro Hero 11 Black lately, but this channel actually started with a smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy S8. And so by making this transition back to iPhone, I am returning to the roots of this channel by doing more videos about accessories and tutorials on using your phone to create videos. So if you guys want to know specifically why I chose to go over to iPhone, I have a whole nother video giving you the reasons for that. But one of the biggest reasons was the camera. So like I said, I've been using an Android phone for over 13 years, and it was actually the Android camera phone that convinced me that the video quality was good enough to start a YouTube channel. So I've always believed in the power of smartphone cameras. But for the iPhone in particular, I have really enjoyed using the camera so far. One thing though to say is that it does not have the very best resolution or specs, like it doesn't shoot 5K or have any tricks up its sleeve like 360 video, but it is able to shoot in up to 4K 60 frames per second, which given the size of this camera and the fact that it's also a smartphone, is pretty mind-blowing. And the quality has been really great so far. Besides shooting in 4K, it can also shoot in slow motion, 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. And it has other features such as time-lapse mode and brand new as of the iPhone 13, it can shoot in cinematic mode. And so that's actually the mode that I'm using right now. And cinematic mode is really the one thing that I thought was gonna separate smartphones from regular cameras because it gives people the ability to shoot with a super low f-stop or aperture and so you have that depth of field and that's something that i was like man if phones can ever master depth of field then the rest of us photographers that use big cameras are really in trouble and so the iphone is now able to do that in both photo mode and video mode and to me that's been an absolute game changer but one thing i will say as a longtime android user is that android cameras and phones are still really good quality and in some cases they've actually exceeded the iPhone in previous years. My Samsung Galaxy S10, for example, had the triple camera before the iPhone did, and it also had this cinematic mode, which was actually called portrait video mode on the Samsung before the iPhone did. And so for a long time, that was one of the reasons why I stayed with Android, because I thought that their cameras overall had better features than iPhones. But at this point, I think that iPhones are really catching up. And these days, it's more on par in terms of the features and quality that you're getting on iPhone cameras and Android cameras. Another camera feature on the iPhone that I've been extremely impressed with is the new action mode. So this is brand new on the iPhone 14, and right now it's still capped at 2.7K. You can't do it in 4K, but I'm sure that's gonna come on the new iPhone 15s or 16s. But action mode essentially gives it the very best stabilization on the phone. And so this is something that you can't do in cinematic mode at the moment. It's only available in regular video mode, and also only available with the back-facing camera, not the front facing camera but when it's enabled it really adds a lot of really great stabilization to the video and so the video quality without action mode is actually pretty good in terms of stabilization like you don't really need to use a gimbal anymore but having action mode enabled gives it even more stabilization and it's really going to start to give GoPro and action cameras a run for their money when it comes to video quality and stabilization. Now in general, the iPhone actually has really good built-in sound quality. And that's whether you're standing in front of the camera or behind the camera. And I think that's because smartphones, you know, are still phones and they're meant to pick up sound. And so it's really good unless the camera starts to get farther away. So now I have the camera on a selfie stick. It's fully extended. It's actually really helping our image quality because you can see more of the background of where I'm shooting. But you might notice that the sound quality isn't so great right now. 
So in these cases, I'm finding it helpful to add an external microphone. And specifically, I've got the DJI microphone here, but it's my favorite external microphone because it's got everything I need to give it a wireless mic to attach to a camera or a smartphone. As an example, I've got the DJI microphone set up, cameras over on a tripod, and when I'm using it, I can walk really far away. I can go all the way back to this swing here, and I should still have more or less the same audio, even when I am this far away from the camera. Actually, this swing is pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really wanna leave. Since I mentioned audio, this is a really good time to mention today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. So one way that I enhance video on my smartphone is to use an external microphone. But sometimes I don't have the external microphone with me or I've already filmed the video and sometimes that sound is kind of subpar. So if that's the case, then what I'll do is go into Epidemic Sound and I'll find a music track to overlay into my video. So sometimes I'll use it to totally swap out the audio in case that audio is totally bad and unusable or other times if the audio is actually okay it's kind of subpar then I'll use a music track underneath to enhance the overall sound quality so if you guys want to try out epidemic sound for yourself there's a link in the description below to get a free 30-day trial any music that you download and use during that 30 days will be copyright free even if you cancel your free trial. So there's nothing to lose. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get back to talking about the iPhone camera quality. Another thing I've really been enjoying about shooting on the iPhone is the fact that my videos are directly on a device where I can immediately upload and share that footage on social media or import it directly into an editing software, such as iMovie, which I didn't even know iMovie was available on phones, but it's pretty cool that it is because it gives you really basic editing tools to make a video on your phone. And so this is something that has always been a challenge whenever you're shooting with a secondary camera, is getting that footage from that camera onto your computer or a phone or some kind of device where you can then process it or upload it. And so having the footage directly on the phone has definitely been a really big advantage. However, it does lead me to some cons or some downsides to using the phone as my primary vlogging or video camera. Now, one of those challenges is limited capacity. So I know that the last Samsung phone that I bought, the Samsung Galaxy S10, I still had the ability to add my own memory card to expand the internal storage on the phone. However, that's really no longer the case with this newest round of modern smartphones. They're coming with predetermined storage on the phone. And so with my iPhone 14 Pro, I ended up going with the smallest amount of storage, 128 gigs. And so I've already filled up this phone twice and had to offload all that footage because I've been shooting in 4K. So having limited onboard storage has definitely made me more diligent in my whole backup system. Like I've had to be very good about making sure that my files are backed up, which is actually a good thing. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a real bummer that you can't expand the storage or just swap out a memory card if you run out of room on your phone. And speaking of, you also can't swap out the battery. I know that, you know, Samsung phones back in the day, you were able to swap out the battery. And so I had friends that would carry several phone batteries with them to swap it out if the phone ever died. And on most cameras, you can still do that. You can swap out a battery and you can shoot all day long. But with the phone, once that battery runs out, you've got to stop and charge or carry an external charger with you. So again, not the end of the world, but just a little adjustment that I've had to make since shooting on my phone primarily. And another really scary thing is that I use my phone not just for shooting photos and videos, but for email, for phone calls, for you know doing online payments. Phone is really important, like it's a really big part of my life. And so if I damage it, drop it, lose it, it's not just a, oh, oops, that was an expensive camera that I just broke or lost. It's my entire life getting lost. And so it just puts a little bit more pressure having my phone be my primary device for so many things, now even for photos and videos. Another downside to using my phone to shoot videos has been the fact that it's just a bigger device. So it's a lot harder to stabilize and to find accessories that can easily support it. And so my phone is actually on the 
the smaller side, it's I think 6.1 inches, so it's roughly the same size as the Samsung Galaxy S10 that I had before, but it is a lot heavier than the Samsung, and it's just a bigger camera that I have to stabilize, and so it's been a little bit more challenging to do that as opposed to, you know, like a GoPro, small little camera that fits in my hand really well, and so that's been a bit of a challenge. But one thing that hasn't been a challenge is filming on the phone. So even though the iPhone is a lot bigger, it's one of those devices that everyone is using these days. They're not necessarily vlogging like I'm doing right now, but if they're not doing that, then they're probably FaceTiming, they're making calls. It's just not unusual to see someone walking around or sitting down and talking to a phone. So it's made me a lot less self-conscious to vlog in public. And along those lines, let me segue a bit and talk about some of the accessories that I've been using to vlog with the iPhone so far. So if you can't already tell, I'm not currently in Seattle. I'm actually here on a Christmas vacation in Santa Barbara, California. And so for this trip, I tried to keep it super minimal. Like I have the iPhone 14 Pro, and then I've got a little selfie stick. It's the Hohem two-axis gimbal selfie stick. I'm not really using the gimbal part of it, but I like the fact that it's such a small, compact, selfie stick that can fit in my purse, folds up really nicely, and it has this extending middle column. So I actually have it planted on a table right now, and it's extended all the way up so that I can be eye level with my camera. So it's actually been a really great accessory for vlogging. And the other thing that I'm using is that DJI microphone that I mentioned earlier. I'm using it in this location in particular because this is a hotel. There are actually kids in a pool behind me, like they're splashing and making a lot of noise. There's also, I think, an air conditioning unit nearby. So if it weren't for all that noise, I could probably film with the iPhone just fine and be okay with the audio quality. But I am making a little exception for this specific scenario here. But when I'm not using the selfie stick to film, which is actually a good chunk of the time, I'm actually using my little pop socket MagSafe wallet. So it's got space in here to carry up to three cards. And so this has basically become my new wallet, but it attaches to the back of the iPhone via MagSafe and it's got pop socket. So, you know, love them or hate them, I really like pop sockets because they're just so ergonomic and comfortable to hold my phone. So it makes it a lot easier to extend my arm out, hold the phone at a distance, and be able to vlog in a pinch. So I love this little accessory here. And the other accessory I've been using a lot is this Ulanzi cap grip. So this is the first generation. There's actually a second generation of this cap grip that's out, but it attaches to your phone via these jaws. It goes around the width of your phone, and then it gives you this little grip here and a little Bluetooth remote. So it actually turns your phone into more of like a point and shoot camera. And it actually works out really well. I'm actually surprised at how much I've been liking this little grip and using it a lot. And once again, it fits in my purse. So very travel friendly. And at the bottom, there's actually a quarter 20 hole. So I can easily attach this to a mini tripod or a selfie stick. So this has been a surprise of an accessory that I've really liked for using when I'm vlogging with my iPhone. So that's just a little preview of the accessories that I've been using with my iPhone so far to make videos. I will be doing more videos about iPhone vlogging accessories as I try them out and build out my iPhone vlogging rig. But in the meantime, this is my one week update of filming videos and vlogging with the iPhone. So let me know if you have any questions or comments down below or have any video suggestions for future videos on the topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.